I'm, I'm going to switch over to Murnal to actually walk through the demo and uh, tell us more. Murnal? Yep, really glad to walk through this demo. While we're loading it up, uh, just want to give some background here. You know, we all have a tendency when talking about AI and other things to go right into Skynet territory or something like that. We wanted to show a real world use case of how everything we talked about in the prior parts of this uh, presentation come together. This is live. So, you know, if there are slight delays here and there, it's because it's running live software. So let's start with Alice. She's a customer success manager at ABC Software. She logs into her dashboard. So her dashboard for this very specific application, which is an insurance chatbot, is using insurance Llama v1.1. Again, already we have two entities, right? Llama is produced by Meta, and um, ABC Software is, you know, well, made up name, but where Alice is a customer success manager. What we can see here is that the context or the active context that's set is insurance Llama v1.1. Let me define what a context is. You know, the dictionary definition is something that says the circumstances for events, statements, or ideas from which they can be fully assessed or understood. And that's very germane to AI. In AI, to get specific about it, a context is a combination of the underlying model and hence all the data that trained it, plus the parameters it's currently been set to. So this is the dashboard Alice has. She's a customer success manager. Let's move over to Bob. So Bob is an insurance agent. So Bob is logging in um, to interact with the software that Alice governs. He puts in a quote for an insurance. He says, I want a specific quote around specific parameters, and that's typed in. Uh, one thing to note, in the top right corner, you can see a session ID. This session ID is also stored on blockchain with every individual context. So when a context is operating, any session tied to that context is also captured. And you'll see why that's important when we start auditing it later in the demo. So as you can see, he gets a very nice response. Here's a quote for a 40-year-old male. This is what the payout could look like. All of this ties up with the actuarial tables because, you know, Llama version 1.1, as Alice had set it up, works really, really well. Now, let's go back to Alice's dashboard. Now, Alice has discovered that there's a new version, Llama 1.2, and she sets that as the active context now. So let's, let's talk in detail about what's going on here. So a mu multitude of things are happening right now. The, all the parameters from this new context are now being ported to the blockchain and being stored there. Now, what we're showing here is just parameterization, session IDs, as well as um, the current state of the model. But theoretically, going forward, you could even take a full neuronal snapshot. In this case, it's a third-party model. So what you have access to really are the parameters. But over time, you could, you could do this for neuronal snapshots. You could go into any level of detail. The blockchain is basically recording every single piece of this information to make sure that you have a tamper-proof and auditable uh, path to trace. Let's look at the blockchain link and see what's being stored. As you can see, there was a successful deploy on the blockchain. You can look at the raw data. Um, if we look at the raw data, you can see you know, all the data that has been captured. Obviously, we won't bore you with the details right now. But as you can see, in a live setting, this all got transferred over as a context switch to version 1.2. And we saw where the parameter set is set at, you know, temperature, p-values, k-values, et cetera. So now that this model is loaded in, let's see how it applies to Bob. So let's get Bob back in. So Bob logs back in, puts in the same exact quote that he had the last time, you know, 40 year old non-smoker. Again, please note that in the top right corner, there's a session ID for this as well, which will be important when we show you how uh, this can be audited. So he gets a really, really weird response, a really weird response that isn't very useful. And if you think about it, the insurance company has now met some risk depending on what their end user license agreement is with their uh, end users, et cetera. This clearly is not keying off of any actuarial tables. So Bob, you know, tells Alice something's gone wrong. 
uh, with this model. Please fix. And so let's go back to Alice. So Alice has received this, and the first thing she does is she goes back to Llama version 1.1. But the first thing to do is, okay, let's revert back to a model. So right now what's happening is all the primitives are being read off of the blockchain to ensure that a tamper-proof auditable path has been traced and Llama v1.1 is being loaded. Meanwhile, while it's being loaded, Alice wants to fetch the sessions and compare them. So she fetches the first session to audit what went wrong. And now she wants to compare it with the new session. So the session on the left is Llama version 1.1. The session uh, in the middle, which we'll be loading right now, is a new session which Bob entered, which was using version 1.2. We can see the parameter set uh, under both of them. And then we can also see the prompts and responses that each of these gave. So what was a really, really complex problem that was hugely, hugely black boxed has now become easily auditable with a combination of the Watson platform and the Casper blockchain. So now that, now that she has this screen in front of her and you know we're just showing two versions of the model here, but she would have an audit path for any session, any version of the model at any time. Now we've reset to Llama version 1.1. Let's see what happens when Bob logs back in. Did the version control actually take hold? So there's a new session ID on the top right, and Bob puts in the same prompt that he did the first time, basically asking for an insurance quote for a 40-year-old non-smoker. So, the AI chatbot is now using Llama version 1.1 and generating a response. And we get the exact same response we got the first time around when we knew the system was working. So what we've shown you here is across three organizations, XYZ insurance company, the customer success manager for ABC software is running the chatbots and the Llama underlying third-party model, we we're able to create a seamless audit flow and a seamless stream of audit and version control. Let's go back to Alice's uh, let's go back to Alice's dashboard and see what else she has access to because this is just the tip of the sphere. So when she's an, as an administrator, she has a ton of access not just to this particular model, but all the models she's uh, running at the time. So let's talk about this model in particular. On the insurance model, we can see risk and compliance. It's consistent with the EU, EU AI Act. And if you go down, we can also see all of the associations uh, that, that this model draws from. What's important here is this allows you to have three things. It allows you to see model and data drift. It gives you great risk management and augmented by blockchain, uh, an incredibly high level of trustworthiness. Now let's also go to the main dashboard because Alice doesn't just run that one chatbot. She runs tons of chatbots, each one of them powered by a similar runtime in the background. She has an overview using the Watson platform augmented by the Casper blockchain of everything that's happening under her customer success parameters. She can look at every single model and there's notifications for market risk, uh, whether the model is performing within green, red, or yellow, and all these parameters can be set up by the admin themselves. And it all works seamlessly with a multitude of technologies, including UX that is surfacing all this data, blockchain that is acting as your reconciliation layer, and of course, the Watson X governance platform that is uh, the open platform that powers all of this. Th with that, that is the end of the demo. Uh, we're very excited that you know ju just in the past few months we were able to create something that shows actual value for an actual industry.